Another Friday at 8 p.m. So you know what that means. Trends live time, baby. My name is Kensani Koza, and I'll be keeping you company for the next hour. But you know, week in and week out, I always say, please just call me Candy. We've got an insane show for you this evening, so you want to stay netta and not go anywhere. As much as today we're starting a brand new month, it is also Halloween weekend. So please keep the celebration going. And if you want to share your looks with us, head on over there by X at Trends on SABC is where you can find us. And on that note, let us shift focus and find out what's been happening around the world in this week's edition of News Wrap. There's a new season of the global hit that captured audiences from across the world, Squid Game 2. This season will focus on revenge and the producers promise improvements on characters and thrills to keep viewers hooked to the plot. Its writer and producer Huang won an Emmy for Outstanding Directing for Drama Series, making history as the first Asian Descent nominee to win. US director David Fincher, who made the 1999 hit Fight Club, is working on an English language version of Squid Game. I don't think it's official yet, so I cannot tell much about it, but you know, I respect him as a filmmaker and creator, so uh, if she does it, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it, watching it, I'm because uh, I'm a big fan of his work, too. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, I don't know yet. <laughs> American singer and actress Solange Knowles has revealed that she's struggling with postural osteostatic tachycardia syndrome, also known as POTS, on social media. In a comment to musician Sean Ross about the affliction, Knowles showed her support and sent him well wishes while revealing her own diagnosis. The Grammy Award winner had in the past cancelled her headlining performance at the Afropunk Festival in Johannesburg, South Africa due to health reasons. Everyone's favorite game, Tetris, turns 40. From baby boomers, millennials to Gen X, it has remained a popular game all over the world. A creation by Russian software engineer Alexei Pachinov. In central London, this milestone was marked with an interactive multiplayer game on a giant LED screen. So we worked really closely with the official Tetris team to launch this interactive version uh, in partnership for their 40th anniversary of Tetris. And we're pretty confident that nowhere else in the world, it's a really world first, has you ever been able to sort of play Tetris on a grand scale like this. So the Avnet screens are a four, four story, 26K interactive screen canvas with spatialized audio and um, that really encourages audiences to come in and have a, an experience worth sharing and interact with our screens and Tetris like never before. That's all for this week. Stay trendy. Thank you for that wonderful news wrap. So, if you're someone who loves a good mix of luxury and lovely vibes, then you're in for a treat. Imagine a space where the finer things in life meet an unforgettable party scene. An experience that's a feast for the senses, with every detail crafted to perfection. From fashion and music to stunning visuals at every turn, this is a playground that promises excitement and elegance in equal measure. Let's see some of the highlights of the luxurious Marvel Circus. The beauty about magic is that most of it really just plays on our imagination. Well, today at Maldus Drift, at this particular event called Luxurious Marble Circus, you can be anything you want. Forget about who you are. I'm not saying lose your identity, but let's not be serious, carry responsibilities, just walk around with a heavy load. Today, we are unleashing your sense of play. We are going to explore the grounds, get to know people, look at the fashion, and most importantly, we are taking off the mask and taking all the actions on the ground. 
glorious guests of the circus. Brace yourselves as we indulge in magnificence and decadence. Savor every taste of this soiree as Step into a playground made for those who savor the finer things in life and can't resist a classic party scene. It's a visual feast perfectly blending fashion, music and the theatrics. You look like a dream. What inspired this outfit? So basically I did a little bit of research because I honestly wasn't sure what to wear, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I just knew that it's either heels or die. Yeah. But the fact that the Marvel Circus is such a, it's a vintage like 1950s, you know, era type of thing. Uh, you know, a little bit of movement, some bedazzles, you know, the vintage hair, that's what I, that's what inspired the look. <laughs> this is where all of uh, ESCOM's light load shedding has come from. It's you, you took all of the lights. Oh. And then you get, ah, you know what, it's okay, man. See la, see azama, see ayenza, into ye too. Peace. Tell me how you interpret, <laughs> tell me how you interpret it, <laughs> the circus. Look, the circus for me um, resembles like South Africa, you know, different cultures, uh, different people coming together to have fun, share ideas, mingle a bit. We don't have like such parties happening often where, you know, people can come from across the country and be merry, you know. So that's how I interpreted it. Besides the outfits, I was a bit late, so I had to put something together, but I'm happy with what I'm seeing from people, yeah. These people are telling us, yo, girl, you might as well be mistakers at this rate. Where did you get the lights? I actually ordered it from she, so we love. Yeah. No, we love. Leaving nothing to chance, each corner you turn offers a fresh visual delight. Our experience really is about being authentic and a space where people can come together and have deeper connections with their people, their community. And then of course it's all centered around food and then we of course also have music that sets the scene for what we provide as an experience. So as you can see behind me we have our Aces Lawn which we've used as almost a, an escape from there's a lot of uh, uh, things happening, a lot of sounds, a lot of uh, sensory experiences on the go. So here you can see people come and they just sit and they relax and it's a place for them just to unwind and retreat from all the busyness of what is happening at the festivities as well. And when the night falls, we make sure we live it all on the dance floor, creating memories that last long after the music fades. Not only do we bring you the best in entertainment, but we also give you some fire performances right here on Trends Live. Duncan is about to take to the stage, and a little bit later on, he joins me to talk about his brand new album, which is climbing the charts and killing it on the socials. But to Duncan, we are in Zale. Asamb. Oh, it's like you're 
I'm still in security, got a gun by law. Now foreign kids are here, copelling tatagi. Live far away, I'm busy. Now when you're pagamis, I'm gonna win a mamis. We lend the casana. Lady Smith, black mambazo, lend the nambi tega. I'm getting bigger, so many new shikin gon' di na my picture, my lips are thick. I think I don't know if I can mamis. I'm ya shis, I'm ya fisa, no good kiss. I miss what you make of the pace. I'm going ya ki, I'm in ya fisa. I'm taking two by my masita. I pantu la ya tanda, I'm doing and kissing your tambi. with the track titled Lotto and now he's back with a bang Bomakwa Levels known as one of SA's most loved hip-hop artists Duncan Mbambo recently dropped his latest album which is packed with collaborations from some of South Africa's top voices and if you thought he's just into hip-hop uh-uh think again baby he has chosen to integrate other genres as a form of expressing his musical diversity signed up with Afrotainment Duncan has also collaborated with DJ Tira, and how lucky am I that they get to join us tonight on the Trends Live stage to talk all about the makings of the album Ingwati Yezone. San Bonani and welcome to Trends Live. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Mirai, mi relevan, I'm ah, no, no, so no, 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 no. I love it for me. I'm so excited that I've got a little bit of Teguini in the studio <laughs> tonight. But tell me, am I saying the title of the album right? Ingwati Yezone? Yeah, yeah. We show us like a cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm Nandi Futine. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm ready to be in my Zuluko. <laughs> but tell us, Duncan, what yeah. is the title of the album mean and what is the album mm. all about? Oh, actually, in what is on it means a uh, book of sins. Oh. I think I like uh, like uh, track about in what is on where and Kuluma Kona and Oma Kelwane uh, Opala in what to Paleluma Kelanoak, who says a spell like okay, uh, Opaleluma Kelanoak in what to go to Makelan. I'm sorry, Bengens are so and so and so more Puma and M. Seventeen Bengen Awako, Nilale Nomgako. So Nilala Nomgako, who end up from Gakeba pregnant, that's meaning an city arc. So my one cool and yazing, I shone at my name, and tell us the young anaxi way up. So in the good woman before shown is on those amis lanjulula. So in anaxi yako and in full woman shown eagles would end our net right by end the listen to Zio, the Guzazo Hamburg. So basically, is a mook vessel good like Uma Usefuna like good na no more shown. My figure and Alelia corner where I tell her no hell, but is on those like say, 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 really about you guys yeah. reflecting, telling stories. Exactly. I absolutely, absolutely think that's so cool. Yeah. Now, Tira, you've been honestly working with so many artists throughout your career, producing with them as well. What makes Duncan so special as somebody to work with as a musician, Bagit? Um, Duncan definitely is the best uh, storyteller uh, a rapper mm. in South Africa by far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that, I mean. No, but honestly, yes, you know, yes. I think if you also listen to the album, mm. um, you will hear the stories that he, to he tells on the album. Like, mm. like the story that he has just told now. Imagine him telling it on the album and rapping and mm. make everything flows, the mm. words, the way he communicates the words and all uh, super talented so for me um, at Afrotainment you know we're all about releasing good music well about uh, working with artists who are focused who are dedicated mm. and um, Udan Kane is just one of those guys that are focused just want to win just want to do good beautiful music you know just want to grow in the music industry and we love and, to see and, that and, success uh, on his uh, career we're killing it we're killing it you, you can see you can see, can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but bring it back to you Duncan mm. I mean I'm going to be a hip-hop artists but yeah. in the album you know you decided to go into other genres of music what yeah. were those other genres and why did you decide to go that route uh, uh yeah 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 like uh isn't it in the movie and the like play album 
angifuna ngiyenzela ama rapper only but mm -hmm. i was doing an album for ngkumuntu bengifuna ukuthi ngkumuntu a relate ke yona so ngithatha abantu abanje ngabo intaba yase dubai ngathatha abantu abanje ngabo azania ngathatha abantu abanamaqwabe thini so uyababona labantu ukuthi like abantu nabo maba maba ingoma zabo like zihlala zine message ukuthi bona aba rap so like ngi mix e abantu abacishe bafana nami it's just that mina ngi rap bona aba rap so that's why i planned that i'm land not done can there yeah. oh no ngi ayithanda leyo i mean maskhulu manje ngomculo i mean there's a lot of people that don't always make it i mean you know this because you've been in the game for so mm. long how does somebody become as good as a lyricist mm. as udankin like what advice would you give to these young up and coming artists abangena kule industry nje um, yo, um, things take time in the music industry. Mm. Um, things need you to really be focused and really work hard in the music industry. Th things can take time. Mm. So your patience is very, very important. Uh, your focus is very, very important. Your discipline is very, very important, you know. So if you can tick those boxes, at least, you know, you can move faster, you can progress faster in the music industry and also just try to get collaborations, um, you know. I think mm. when you do collaborations, you know, so rap and abanya uh -huh. It also sh tells you which, what kind of level you at. You know? yes. That way you can see which are. Ah, if rap and about Duncan, now now I can see that now I'm in. You know? yeah, I'm yeah. in the things. <laughs> 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 we also want to be part of this industry. I mean, going back about the collaborations. I mean, you mm. talked about some people right now, but yeah. Abazania and stuff like. How does it come about to get collaborations? Like, do you call these people? Tell you, tira, hey, like, nenda anja ngusi na mbato le laban, guti bangi na gule album. Yo, uh, awa ye, I tell you, tira, guti yo, I need to so, I'm tell so and so and so, and then he makes it happen. So, awa ye like very like in his kulumela mina na awa abo. So, and mina ma like mangi nzi collaboration in Shalangland elumo ya wa no. So like ang very like nzi guti. Uh, who's big no more ban like in London more I'm not I think Lengo Male uh and a fit are perfect to span band. So yeah, when the Ranja Lung Land Lumo Awam you go to King, I think in Ting Munto so and so Lengo. And then in Jelutira or in Chelami. That's the authenticity of yeah, the music that exactly. you make. Yeah, I mean, I have bon. to ask you about getting Bongo Riot. What a legend. Yeah. <laughs> How did that collaboration come about? I am yo, so jealous. Yo, I heard my name Bongo Rakudu Kufumayo. Yeah. Good to the collaboration. I'm here. I beg you, Fenya Kevela Kapulu Sugar and Jela Kesagui, King of Instrument. Beg you. Beg you, Fenya. So I think uh, 20. 2020 snows hours release the album mm -hmm. some feature some feature is again so la ilang mtande kona kakulu ati yo kuzo melabe kona na we album ya mso vele besa communicator so ngati no krotman so melo pindu bu wendi wange na kuingo mezu youtube kwe album so ni inde la kuti ngayo so yang chabule kakulu shout out to krotman pongo rayo no man and he's gonna be yeah. on stage performing the song but i want to talk about the song yeah. that you guys are going to be performing yeah. it's called paycheck tell us yeah. how this collaboration came about because now when i'm a 16 pass go yana yungo <laughs> yeah, it, it paid day. I mean, from time to time, mm. I, I think of, you know, let me show these rappers that, you know, I can flow. <laughs> There's something called flow ye bearings. They need to understand that the flow ye bearings, hey, yeah, yeah, it's too much, yeah? Um, so on payday, I listened to Duncan's album and I was like, yo, Duncan, mm -hmm. I really want to, you know, contribute to Nami on your album. And I think also, you know, being me, being on your album, it mm -hmm. will also, you know, work for just us, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, payday. Yes. So all these people that think maybe Zawe or Duncan wrote my verse. Hey, yeah. And Napo, and Napo, Who's Palele? Hey, come guys. on. Yes, in Nina, yes. I'm too expensive. <laughs> I have to understand. Too expensive. <laughs> That you came back as well, not just as a producer, but with the pen. And now mm. we're just Duncan Sikfisela Yonkin Tlantla with your album. Thank you guys so much for being here. Please stick around because these two, plus Bongo Wright, is going to be joining us on stage as they sing Ipe Day because this festive season is going to be on the quad, the queen, the steroid levels musically. So, and Wanganya, guys, thank you so thank much. You so much. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I know. So, Mr. Make Your Circle Bigger is at it again for the fourth season. Mzanti, once again, we get to enjoy the immaculate music mastery spotlighted through the innovative Unplied Sonic concept. The feel good live sessions by renowned artist, songwriter, and super producer J.R. Bukhape. And it's dialing it up by bringing on the highest caliber of Mzanti's artists, such as Ama Piano makers Wodali Wonga, Marumba Pitch, Kuru Kutabe Huli, Liti. It's going to be a 14 episode season, and Sileba my Fadi attended the recording to get us the 411. I created it because I needed a place where artists could feel comfortable, but also I needed a space where I could connect with my fans. So at that time, I had taken a year of making music, it was eight months or so, and I had said, I'm not going to make any music because I was working on an album, What a Life. And at that time, I needed a way to still connect and still remain relevant and still find ways of relevance within the industry and still connect with my audience. And then in the same studio we were recording at, the album, my director who's directing now actually came and said, Bona, uh, there's a place upstairs, you see you want to shoot something, there's a place upstairs, the balcony, let's shoot there. Um, and you can use that footage to do whatever, you know, to release it every week. And I said, cool, let's go. And that's how it was born. <laughs> Slowly I was learning out of music. I think I had performed three weeks in a row or something and I had performed like over 40 songs. Yo. And I said, you know, hey guys, now my songs, I mean, I think the my 50, 60 songs that I have mm. and I can't perform another two weeks because it's fail. Mm. Let's call some other people. Mm. And we started, I think we called Reason and then we called someone else and we called Shekinah. So we then called different people to come and that's how it was born, you know. And then slowly, yeah, evolved into a place where, because I wanted to be vulnerable with my audience, it started becoming a place where the artists can grow. You know what, I've got a very great production team, you know, that really pays attention to what the culture is about. I want, uh, I, I'm not as young as I used to be, like, you know, uh, I'm not old, you know, I'm 37 years old, but there's younger guys in the team, you know, who have their fingers to the pulse and they understand the lay of the land. So when they go for Ama Piano artists, they're not just going to go for flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for someone who's had longevity, someone who's got a repertoire, a repertoire that's worth performing, mm -hmm. but also someone whose integrity is based within the authenticity of music. Mm -hmm. Someone like Dali Wong, he's, he's been, Dali's one of my favorites. He's actually my favorite Ama Piano male vocalist. Mm -hmm. He's got something, he's always been for years. And for me, Hearing Dali, you know, deliver. I knew he could deliver something like that. I always saw something special. And then when you interview Dali, I like, oh, people were like, oh, this guy. No, then people were like, Dali, multifaceted, Dali, you know what I'm saying? But it's something that you you know when you see artists and to him, he's got something, you know, it's just waiting for other people to see it. And I'm happy that other people will get to see Dali in this light. You're here for a reason, and this is the meaning for me, you know. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. I think you're such a talent. And this season on Feel Good, we want to support things that are worth more, and I think that we should give you that moment, you know, because... I think the band also played, like, a huge role, because we, we hardly rehearsed, eh? Wow! And, but because I know how good they are, mm -hmm. I had, like, this trust in me. <laughs> I trusted them. But I'm fun to keep on and... Some of the stuff, like most of the stuff we did there, uh, on the, in the performance, uh, wasn't planned. I saw it's all about performing live with a live band. I've never done a um, performance with a live band. Mm -hmm. So this was my first. Mm. And, and how was it? It was a sunset, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, well, beautiful set up the people, food, the drinks. Mm -hmm. Everything is just nice, man. Sunburn and Buffet to tell you, Alana, I love you guys so much. Love you, love you guys so much. And you're watching Trends Live in Tandakapu. <laughs> Yeah, is it hot or is it just me? Anyway, 
it's time for us to bring you more upbeat energy and pay a nod to Durban's party scene. Oma chiki chiki cha with Bongo Riot, Duncan and DJ Tira setting the trends live stage ablaze again. E weekend in Kulu, say Kalili. What's a Friday? So you're spending money. Your shit cars expensive hybrids. Pretty. So best bet your bonga basha bafa. So so go bonga so best bonza mata. Pretty. What's a Friday? So you're spending money. Your shit cars expensive hybrids. Pretty. So best bet your bonga basha bafa. So so go bonga so best bonza mata. Pretty. And we're back. You're still tuned in to SABC News Channel 404. Creating fine wine is a labor of love. There's something endearing about meeting people who are passionate about their craft, especially if we can eat and drink it. Wiener Files gathered to hear from renowned winemaker Catherine Marshall, who's crafted unique blends that pay homage to our soils and summers. Our producer, Rufilo Matela, had the opportunity to sit with this maverick and savor the flavors. Catherine and uh, Dario have something quite special and unique for us this evening but I would like to delve into the journey of becoming a winemaker more especially being a woman in this industry and pioneering with her very own. Catherine Marshall is an accomplished woman and of course in the male dominated industry there must have been some challenges. We've got one of the best wines, in fact the best wines in uh, South Africa in the world. Ask about our Riesling darling and of course what goes super well with wine food of course we'll be chatting to chef dario in a moment let's have a sip doll so i think i've always been a little bit of a maverick i've always been a little bit controversial a little bit different and i want to continue being that way to test the waters push the boundaries swim in other ponds that nobody else is swimming in and just and just test the waters you know for for other great flavors because that's what i enjoy doing the most is is creating amazing flavors and using wine as a medium to do that. Her pioneering work in Pinot Noir production and her role in the Gararist movement made her a respected figure in the South African wine industry, regardless of gender. We find out how she's been able to sustain that position. 
you know, I could go on forever about that. But all I can say is when I started out, yes, it was pretty patriarchal back then. Um, but I had two wonderful winemaker friends who were male and they taught me everything I needed to know and were very supportive of me. And um, that kind of guided me into the world of wine. But I'm happy to tell you that now there are more women than ever um, riding the wave and making some unbelievably beautiful wines. And some of them are winning massive awards and international winemakers around the world. So I'm very proud of the fact that I was one of the pioneers who laid the foundation for, for women who are doing amazing wines. What's a wine launch without the delectable flavors to go with it? Meet Chef Dario De Angeli. He and his team at SEC kept the six course dinner going. There's a buzzword in food at the moment, like third culture cuisine kind of thing. So we, we try to do a lot of that kind of stuff. So you'll get a little bit of East meets West, Asian kind of meets sort of Italian kind of thing or something like that. His relationship with Marshall began about 25 years ago and now the two have reconnected and joined forces. Catherine started Barefoot Wines at the time kind of thing and I loved the Barefoot Wine story. They used to do these um, these uh, things where you actually would go and put the grapes in a barrel kind of thing and Barefoot stomp them kind of thing and it just, it was so cool, it really was. So um, Catherine and I started um, sort of collaborating and I thought okay how can I make a little spin on Palmer Ham and Melon so we, um, we added to it guanciale, which is a pork cheek bacon kind of thing from Italy. We added to it a smoked pork steak kind of thing that had been minced up. I then added the local ingredient called baldajan, which is a wild spearmint, um, and that gave it that nice minty flavor. And then I thought a nice sort of Korean spin of a sauce on that kind of thing, a little bit of chili, sesame, etc. inside there, and that's how it came about kind of thing. And the reason for it was because the Sauvignon Blanc that we had first has a lot of tropical fruit inside there. It's got a lot of freshness to it. And that and that was the reason for the dish was to enhance that freshness of the wine. It all starts there and I'm absolutely fundamentally on a path of teaching about our soils in the Western Cape because they are very ancient and we have a incredible story to tell about them. They are some of the most well the oldest soils on the planet and we need to talk about that. We need to talk about the health of our, our soils and that translates into the health of our plants the health of our food, the health of our vines, which ultimately translates into the health of our wines, which then impacts when you put that in your body, that you are, are kept healthy. So that is really my mission. That is my labor of love. From soil to glass, it's truly remarkable. The years it takes to hone the right flavors under favorable conditions with expertise to create magnificent wine that's enjoyed through thoughtful sips. Cape Town offers more than just scenic views. It's becoming a wellness haven, drawing people from all over the globe as they seek peace, balance, and a bit of inner magic. Today, we're delving into the world of Reiki, a healing practice rooted in Japan. And now it's embraced here on South African soil with wellness hubs that make this journey accessible to everyone. Take a look. Cape Town beckons with yet another alluring reason to visit. A soul-nourishing Reiki session set against the iconic Table Mountain. Recently, Rising Wild Sisters treated us to this rejuvenating realm, tapping into transformative energy of Reiki session designed to help you reset, awaken your inner peace and achieve a blissful state of Zen. For myself, moving through addiction, was what brought me into this kind of work um, and yeah automatically that kind of just guided me towards meeting my sister mm -hmm. um, and we connected on a lot of big important aspects like community um, diversity inclusivity safety you know especially mm -hmm. in our communities and because of that it kind of just unfolded into what rising wild is moving from what our intention is, is to bring the medicine to our communities, um, to let our communities remember that this is not for a certain type of people, but that it's for all people. What's important to us is to shift like, you know, that healing isn't so serious um, and that it can happen in every space for all kinds of people. These Cape Town practitioners have embraced this ancient art. 
Yes. Growing up in the Cape Flats, you know, mindfulness and yoga and stillness, not even yoga, but just the practice of being present and mindful and slowing down. It's not always accessible to us or the information on how to do it f for free in our homes is not readily available to us. And so um, I'm doing this work for young Storm. We used to attend music festivals all the time. And sometimes there were these holistic spaces, but I never really felt that I belonged um, in those spaces, you know? So I think bringing a mindful or even the sober approach to certain, to, to having fun and partying is, is so important. Rooted in Japan, Reiki is a healing practice based on the flaw of the universal life force that connects all living things. But I think specifically for Corona, we are so excited to create a space for people to become present and rooted so they can have an extra fantastic time at this, at this festival, you know, you dance with your body, dance is medicine. For an added layer of insight, consider pairing your Reiki experience with a tarot card reading. Together, they turn a simple relaxation escape into a profound spiritual journey. From sipping wine to unwinding with Reiki. But I do think that it calls for a young break. Don't forget to find us on X. We are at Trends on SABC. And we'll be right back. Bless Kasuta. So if you've just tuned into Trends Live, then you have missed a lot. But don't worry, we still have so much more coming your way. Like right now, it's time to deliberate. Yes. After a year of many successes in Mzanti, we think it's only fair that the best be given their flowers. The SA Styles Awards 2025 judges gathered for a luncheon to discuss the impactful industry personalities that stood out this year. Celebre My Friday, of course, was out there. So let's take a look what she so it's time to deliberate meet the judging panel of the essay style awards 2025 Everybody who's here has, has done so much for this country and we should appreciate for the, the Style Awards for what they are, not only about fashion. The SA Style Awards has various categories ranging across industries. In 2023, the Icon Award went to legendary playwright Dr. John Kani. First I thought, do these people think I'm a fashionista? And I found out that the SA Style Awards are actually about the contribution an individual, male, female, that is made within their area of operation, but made an impact into making a change in the society. Also celebrating those that have gone the extra mile in their work, and that work has been exemplary to the young people, to make them understand that whatever you do in your little corner can bring the light. This brunch had the key industry players gathered to deliberate on the earmarked talent that will be walking away with the respective awards next year. It was such a vibrant discussion. Names on the table. Actually, we needed to award the entire South Africa. But unfortunately, we had to come to a particular number. And that number wasn't easy because everybody put their candidate forward and whatever they supported that candidate was absolutely valid and unchallengeable. But there are other as well in the same category who also had done. So I'm very, very pleased at the end result. It reflects the talent, the passion, the courage, the integrity of South Africans. A passionate country indeed with immense talent. Now gearing up for the 28th SA Style Awards, one can only imagine the heavyweights that ought to be celebrated. 
it was incredibly heartwarming to see that many of the names that cropped up that we had to deliberate on are people who are doing incredible work in the context of local. I'm from proudly South African and so you know when there's a local tone to it whether it's the work they do that the, you know the uh, you know the different nominees do whether it's the you know the different different industries that they contribute that they work within which then ultimately contribute positively to the value chain of each industry and to the economy and the GDP but most importantly to the households. Myself and Hallie are are the youngest judges on the panel and so for us it's about reflecting the voices of the youth the up-and-coming fresh talent who's exciting we have our finger on the pulse so we're fighting for the new kids to get their recognition amongst the icons <laughs> mm, sounds like we can really trust on our judges Mutrendi who would you give this type of accolade to we have seen that they absolutely just encourage and motivate so many up and new, you know, new and upcoming, um, aspiring people. And I just love that they believe in everyone. Listen, I think I could have made it onto that list, don't you think? Anyway, we're always looking forward to the bright future of talented individuals for these designers and their time is now. While the globe celebrates the Teba Magugus and Makosas of this world, we cast our eyes to some of the biggest emerging names in fashion to see their work and find their passion points of design. Our producer, Rufule Matela, had the opportunity to catch up with them at the Handmade Africa exhibition in Mildestrift. The finest in Pan-African design was recently on show at the Handmade Africa debut event. These designers are storytellers shifting and shaping the narrative of design by creating unique and impressive looks for the modern African. I am trying to build a platform that's not only telling stories but uplifting the community. I feel like the fashion industry at times can exclude people from like impoverished situations which I come from. So I just felt like if no one was going to let me in, I was going to build a platform to allow others like me. We started in 2019, so it's been about five years. And um, the brand is kind of all about having fun. I always tell people when they ask me like, what are you inspired by? I'm like South Africans, like the spirit of South Africans. So the brand is very lively, it's very colorful, it's very conversational. It's meant to be something you can have fun in and you can be social in. Can you guys give me a sense of, you know, uh, the temperature or the climate that you are currently in as designers in South Africa? Do you find that there are still certain challenges or are things a little bit easier than they were a few years ago? That's a really great question. I think um, things started off easy, but now we're in the creative business and we have bigger things to take care of. So it's like the, we have like nice challenges um, because we have, there are families depending on us, we have staff depending on us, we have customers um, trying to really just be consistent in our business. So the business has grown into like a nice place where we feel that we are now exposed to much more risk and much more opportunities to grow. South Africa has kind of been blowing up over the last maybe three, four, five years. And I don't really see that stopping anytime soon. It seems like a lot of people are interested in what we're doing. And I'm starting to get clients from all over, not only specific to South Africa anymore. And even then, like it feels like South Africans themselves are really warming up to shopping local and supporting designers and handcrafters and all kinds of small businesses. It's true that creativity flows from within. These passionate designers are well versed in their craft and it's beautiful to see. Color of the season, sir. Give us something. I would say terracotta. Terracotta. Mm. Burnt orange, uh -huh. those hues, like, you know, I love those are my colors at the moment. Yeah. So I don't follow seasons, I create my own season. So this is the color. <laughs> 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 Where do you find your inspiration? I always say my mom. <laughs> um, she's always been someone that went against what everyone else was doing, even in fashion. I have so many pictures of outfits that she put me in. And she was just like experimental and asked questions. So I look up to her a lot. But I love people. I love people's stories. And I'm just inspired by people's hearts. And your ideal client, who wears Bum Collective? Oh, 
oof, we dress a lot of different people. Uh, they tend to be um, mostly women who are like incredibly confident um, and incredibly sure of themselves. Can you tell us about the jumpsuit you're wearing today? Is this from your collection? Yeah. Yeah, so it's fresh, fresh. It's new, new. Um, it's part of our new collection and the collection is available on our online store. This concept uh, has put together Africa as a continent to celebrate yeah. all of us and just to showcase our work to the world. And I think it's just a, a beautiful pivot for African yeah. designers so that people see that we actually are creative and we create such beautiful products. Remember the names, these local designers are coming with the heat. Their looks are ideal for your next event and add a meaningful bit of flair to your outfit. Oh man, when I say that I enjoy spending my Friday evenings with you on Trends Live, I really mean it. Thank you so much to our guests for giving us a, their time, their ear, their energy, but a big special thank you to you for tuning in. Let's do it again next week, Friday, 8 p.m. sharp, Akir, right here on SABC News Channel 404. Until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Stay sweet and good night. Bye.